Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello guys, we are from group 3 We will explain about Renaissance 1500 until 1603 So the next, our explanation Please listen carefully and get the point The first is historical background about Renaissance era. To means even how to shape this period in English literature, the in the Reformation and the widespread use of the printing press. The Reformation in October 31, 15 and 17, Martin Luther, a German priest, published his 95 this against the sale of papal indulgences to help building street Peter's Basilica. And then this led to the subsequent rebellion against the Catholic authorities and the birth of Protestantism. The Catholic cross and its hierarchy lost much of its power and influence. This gave rise to a consciousness about humanity that didn't wholly depend on religion and be and became much more centered around the human being, a movement we identify as humanism. Zaman Renaissance merupakan zaman peralihan sekaligus pergerakan budaya dari abad pertengahan hingga zaman modern. Zaman Renaissance ini adalah uh, lahirnya kembali kebudayaan Yunani Romawi uh, yang disebut juga Zaman Kegelapan atau Dark Age uh, pada abad pertengahan ketika penguasa gereja berkuasa dan adanya doktrin bahwa gereja sangat kuat bagi orang, sangat kuat. Nah, bagi orang yang merugikan gereja pada zaman itu akan mendapatkan hukuman. Sebagai contohnya, pada zaman tersebut eh, ada tokoh namanya Copernicus. Pasti tidak asing bagi kalian. Copernicus ini dibunuh dikarenakan menemukan teori matahari sebagai pusat tata surya atau teori heliocentris. Hal ini bertolak belakang dengan adanya doktrin gereja pada zaman kegelapan tersebut. Munculnya zaman renaissance ini ditunjukkan untuk menghidupkan kembali humanisme klasik pada abad pertengahan renaissance. Nah, renaissance ini mengutamakan individualisme yang menempatkan manusia untuk menjadi dirinya sendiri. The next is characteristic of the renaissance era. Renaissance is the starting point of a modern civilization in Europe. Nah, zaman Renaissance ini adalah awal mulanya pada zaman modern. Renaissance made humans born into the world to cultivate, perfect, and enjoy this world only after they, they looked up to heaven. Zaman Renaissance membuat manusia terlahir kembali ke dunia uh, menjadi manusia yang kuat, menjadi yang uh, sempurna, dan dapat menikmati dunia. Renaissance told humans to use their abilities and knowledge for service to others uh, dan menuntut manusia untuk menggunakan kemampuannya dan pengetahuan human must play an active role in life not passive while submitting the fate Renaissance humans must have the courage to praise themselves prioritize their ability to think and act responsibility produce works of art and direct their destiny to others. Okay, next to the background in Elizabethan period. In the Elizabethan period lasted from 1550 to 1620. Queen Elizabethan ascended the throne after Mary died towards the end of 1558. Elizabethan was a wise queen. He succeeded. He succeeded in solving problems, important matters such as religion, peace with Scotland, 
the establishment of national government and achievements such as expansion of international trade, strength in the seas, and victories over the Spanish Armada. During the reign of Elizabethan, a literary figure known throughout the world emerged, namely William Shakespeare. Of course, we know who William Shakespeare was. At the time, hundreds of literary works written by English poets other than Shakespeare also appeared and it can be said that English literature reached its golden age. Okay, now we are going to the characteristics of English literature, errors, and literature of the Elizabethan period. And first is about the poetry. So, there was an author called by Edmund Spencer. He was born in London in 1552. Spencer studied at the Merchant Taylor School and then continued to Pembroke College. Cambridge, where he received his master's degree in 1576. In 1678, he pursued a career serving at Earl of Leicester, London. Spencer's most famous work is A Fairy Queenie, a well-known and long longest-running allegory of English literati literary poetry. And the next is George Chapman, one of the most respected writers of his time. His appearance as a poet was somewhat late and his first work was Hoffitt's Banquet of Sense in 1595. Two of his best known translation works are The Iliad in 1611 and The Odyssey. Oh, Odyssey in 1613. Michael Drayton. Most of his life was devoted to history and he drew aspiration from history as shown in his poems Ballad of Agincourt and Polly Albion, a large poem in the form of Alexander, which contains a geographical description of England. Thom and the next is Thomas Sackville. He is known for his poem entitled The Mirror of Magistratis, which describes the life of the rules of that era. So in poetry, yeah, there are four of others that shown here. So that's all for me. And for the next, please. Elizabeth's prose underwent a change. The characters of the story are no longer extraordinary creatures like in romance, but only ordinary people. The language style is somewhat quantified and uses long sentences. The famous novels of this period were First John Lee, Tell the story of a loved angel, wrote to friend of the same girl. This work contains teaching about manners, feeling, and morals. Second, Philip Sidney. His most famous work is the Arcadia. Arcadia takes the form of petrol romance, which is a collection of songs and sonnets shown to Lady Penelope de Verrox and Lady Rich. And the last is Thomas Nash. He first introduced the story called The Picarus Chronicle as opposed to pastoral romance. The most rapidly developed of the Elizabeth period were dramatic works. Dramatic are no longer so like I'm at teaching religion and morals, but also I'm at presenting human life. Famous playwriters include first Christopher Marlowe, 
His work, The Tragic History of Dr. Faustus, has the name of finding power through science. In this drama, Dr. Faustus, a scientist who is thirsty for knowledge, met a pact with the Satan. My best of palace in order to be able to master all kind of knowledge and power. After being able to enjoy all knowledge and power for 24 years, Marlowe's soul was dragged to hell by the demon. And the last is William Shakespeare. He was the greatest English poet and playwright. William Shakespeare has four periods. First is experimental period. This period is marked by the characteristic of youth. And next, development period. At this time, Shakespeare has shown accuracy and knowledge of this characteristic of a deep human. Next, period of gloom and depression. And the last is the quiet period. Background of Jacobian period Jacobian literature begins with a drama including some Shakespeare's greatest and darkest plays. The dominant literature figure of James Rain was Ben Jansen, whose varied and dramatic works followed classical model and were enriched by his word wordly, particularly English wit, his satiric dramas, notably the greatest folk poem. I'll take a cynical wit of human nature, also cynical were the horrific revenge tragedies of John Ford, Thomas Middleton, Creel Turner, and Job Webster. Novelty was in great demand and the possibilities of plot and genre was exploited almost to exhaustion. Still, many excellent play, plays were written by men such as the George Chapman, the master of comedy Thomas Decker and Philip Messinger, and the team of Francis Bob and John Fletcher. Drama continued to flourish until the closing of theater at the onset of the English Revolution in the Jacobian era's most fiery and eloquent author of political tracts was also one of the greatest of all English poets, John Milton. In Milton, the literary and philosophical heritage of nations merged with Protestant political and moral conviction. The lifting of Puritan restriction and the reassembling of the court led to a relaxation of restraint, both moral and stylistic, embodied a sub figure of the Earl of Rochester. Okay, next is background in the Puritan or less Renaissance period. The Puritan movement was originally only a religious movement, but due to pressures and unwise actions against the Puritan by James I and Charles I, both of whom were disliked by their people because of their depositism, the Puritan movement developed into a political movement in opposition to the king. The conflict situation reached its, its peak in the Civil War 16 and 42 until 16 and 46 and 60 and 48 and finally the Puritan execute Charles I then the Puritan established a Commonwealth government under the leadership of Oliver Cromwell next the Puritans reign produced a large number of literary works poetry and prose, but drama could not develop because it was prohibited by the authorities. Drama was considered a hotbed of immorality by the Puritans' rules. And the next material is about Renaissance characters. The first character of Renaissance is Dante Alighieri. 
twelve and sixty five to thirteen and twenty one. Danto was born on May twenty one on your twelve and sixty five in Florence. He comes from a wealthy family. He was a violent warrior. He wanted his country to be more eased from the influence of the three great empires namely the papacy, Spain, and French. He began to become a critic and opponent of papal morals, which were considered unjust and immoral. The climax is his spilled in a book entitled The Monarchy or On Monarchy, which means the position and freedom of the Pope as the highest spiritual leader of the Catholic Church, while at the at the same time become the authoritarian king of the world or papal kingdom. Dante's works include La Vita Nuova or The New Life which describes human love, Commedia which was written while he was in long exile in Ravenna. This book contains this, the journey of the human soul which which is full of pain on its journey from the real of the world to the unseen world. The main character is Virgilius, or the name of writer, writer from ancient Roman times, who after his death has to go through three phases, namely inferno or hell, purgatory or cleansing the soul, and paradiso or heaven. So, Dante lahir pada tanggal 21 Mei 1265 di Florence. Dia berasal dari keluarga yang kaya, dia adalah seorang prajurit Firenze, dan dia juga ingin negaranya lebih jauh dari pengaruh tiga kerajaan besar, yakni kerajaan Kepausan, Spanyol, dan juga Perancis. Dia mulai menjadi kritikus dan penentang moral Kepausan yang dianggap tidak adil dan tidak bermoral Klimaksnya dia tumpahkan dalam buku berjudul The Monarchia atau On Monarchy Yang berarti kedudukan dan kebebasan paus sebagai pemimpin spiritual tertinggi gereja katolik Mengapa sekali dan juga hmm, paus sebagai pemimpin spiritual tertinggi gereja katolik Dan juga sekaligus mengapa menjadi raja otoriter dunia atau kerajaan Kepausan. Karya Danton antara lain La Vita Nuova atau The New Life yang menggambarkan cinta manusia yang ditulis saat dia berada dalam pengasingan lama di Rivania. Buku ini, buku La Vita Nuova or The New Life ini berisi tentang perjalanan jiwa manusia yang penuh penderitaan dalam perjalanannya dari alam dunia menuju dunia goib. Tokoh utamanya adalah Virgilius atau nama seorang penulis dari zaman Romawi kuno yang setelah kematiannya dia harus uh, the Virgilius ini harus mengalami tiga fase yaitu inferno atau neraka, purgatorio atau pembersihan jiwa dan juga terakhir adalah paradiso atau surga. And the second character is Giovanni Boccaccio. Giovanni Boccaccio was born in Caratalda, Italy in 1313 to a merchant from Florence. His works include epic stories such as The Bed and Aenid, and prose such as Amato, and poetry such as Amoroso Vision and Invel Faisalon. The highlight of his work, the camera, another literary work, the Genealogus Derum Gentilium or on the Genealogy of God, which is composed of 15 volumes. Jadi, Giovanni Boccaccio ini lahir di Cartaldo, Italia pada tahun 1313 dari seorang pedagang dari Florence. Karya-karyanya meliputi cerita epik seperti The Bait and Aenid dan juga seperti prosa seperti prosa yaitu uh, dengan judul Ameto dan juga puisi karyanya yang puisi seperti Amoroso Visione and Ninvel Fiesolen. 
puncak karya dari Giovanni Boccaccio adalah Decom- Decameron Karya sastra lain yaitu The Genealogist Derum Gentilium or The Ge- Genealogy of God yang terdiri dari 15 jilid And the third character is Francisco Petrarca This figure was born on July 20 on year 13 and 4 in Tuscan. He studied law in Montpellier and continued at the University of Bologna. However, he was more interested in literature and painting. He is a humanist who experiences things that are they are naturalist, innocent and what they are. One of his expressions in nature is written in a painting called Icarus. Francesco Petrarca. So, sosok ini lahir pada tanggal 20 Juli 1304 di Tuscan. Dia belajar hukum di Montpellier dan melanjutkan di Universitas Bologna. Namun, saat dewasanya dia lebih tertarik pada sastra dan lukisan padahal dia kuliahnya atau studinya dia mengambil belajar hukum. Tetapi dia lebih tertarik pada sastra dan lukisan. Jadi dan dia adalah seorang humanis yang mengalami hal-hal yang naturalis. Dia ini juga seorang aktivis kemanusiaan yang naturalis, yang polos dan juga apa adanya. Salah satu ekspresinya di alam tertulis dalam lukisan berjudul Ikaros. Dia juga Hmm, salah satu dia juga mempunyai karya yang terkenal yaitu salah satunya lukisannya yang berjudul Icaros. The next is Lorenzo Falla. This figure was born in Rome into a family of jurists. One of his well-known saints to sacrifice life for truth and justice on the path to the highest good, the highest honor and the highest reward. Among his works was the Velup, published in 1440, which contained his admiration for Stoicist ethics, which touched the importance of being physically immobile in order to gain the safety of the soul. His book, entitled The Liberal Adverio, says human individuality is root in the greatness and uniqueness of man. especially freedom, so that the original will of the creator does not limit human free action and does not negate the creative role of humans in its history. His book, entitled The Falso, Predita et Ementita Constantini, Donation, Acclamation, contains about the donation of gifts to the Pope by the Emperor Constantinus is fake because from the point of view of the language of the donation it is clearly not the style of the 4th century but the 8th century Desiderius Erasmus Desiderius was born on 1466 in Gouda her mother was named Margaret After graduating from high school, he continued to Augustin Monastery in Stein until he became a priest then continued to the University of Paris. The results of the work are grouped into three groups as follows. The first, the satirist work group with the aim of exposing all the weakness of the corrupt, hypocritical disease that afflicts society, like price or folly. And the second, satirical group of works in the form of moral message that are expected to improve or influence the mentality of Catholics, such as the book entitled Handbook of Christian Knight and the Complaint of Peach, and the last group in the form of translation of the New Testament, scriptus based on original Greek texts such as Anot on the New Testament The Prince of the Christian Humanist Niccolo Machiavelli This Italian political philosopher was born in 1469 in Florence, Italy His father is a lawyer 
During the following 14 years, he served in the Florentine Republic and was involved in various diplomatic missions on his behalf, traveling to France, Germany, and within Italy. His famous work are The Prince Written, 1513, and the discourse he opened the first ten books of Titus Livius. Among his other works are the Ardiet of War, A History of Florence, and La Mandragola, but his famous subject is The Prince, perhaps the most brilliant he has written and the easiest to read of all philosophical writings. Machiavelli died in 1527 at the age of 58. Okay then, we jump to Leonardo da Vinci biography. At 1452 to 1519. He is described as the Renaissance man. Why? Because he's very genius. He's an architect. He's a, a musician, writer, sculptor. Very genius, right? Yeah. Hearing this name, Leonardo da Vinci, go, do you remember something? That's right. He is a creature of Mona Lisa picture. Where you can find the Mon- Mona Lisa picture. Mona Lisa picture is there to be in a museum. When you watch a movie, 99 lights in Europe, in Europe sky, you will find the picture of Mona Lisa at the museum that shown in the movie. And beside that, he is also known for designing many creations like designing tanks and cars which he put through his bicolor image but although actually he really made in his lifetime that's Leonardo da Vinci now Francis Bacon 1561 to 1626 fresh Francis Bacon is an expert on British politics and philosophy. He creates a book of philosophy which entitled by Novum Organum or we can say New Instrument. This book is different from the book which is written by Aristotle which is seems log- logical. For Bacon's side He think that the experiment is not only deductively or determined by syllogism or from general to specific, but rather to search and have lots of review so that the conclusion will be formulated. And in Bacon's side, he thinks that experience is more important than knowledge. Go on to Nicolaus Copernicus 1473 to 1543. Nicolaus Copernicus is a prior who sparked the heliocentric theory. What is heliocentric theory? Heliocentric theory is a theory which states that the sun is a center where the earth, the planets, and all things surrounding them is surrounding the sun. And this theory is opposed to the court's policy in the diplomatic philosophy. His understanding was silenced by the court But he was not punished because he was a pastor there. The Karch only prohibited his book, which entitled The Revolutionibus, from being distributed. 
and this book is categorized to be forbidden book and you have to know that Nicholas Copernicus is a father of economy and astronomy that's it while actually the one who find heliocentric theory not only Nicholas Copernicus before that also there are some scientists which state the same but they don't have any accuracy sign to be proven so that the theory is not trusted while Nicholas got an accuracy signs to be proven that he is famous by his statement that stated the the sun is a center the next is john kepler 1571 to 1630 john kepler or johannes kepler is an astronomist and scientist which famous by his laws of motion for the planets he got lots of laws like the first laws from an uh, ellipse motions and then lots other and also he created three kinds of laws of motions for the planet which you can read by yourself Okay, the last is Galileo Galilei, 1564 to 1642. Galileo Galilei is a great inventor of the science of acceleration, which he usually called by the father of modern science. He also is an astronomist who encouraged Copernicus theory then he also discovered of the basic law of physics and the discovery of the planet Jupiter satellite and then the telescope maker now we can see the star by a telescope who created that galileo galilei yes yeah that's the end of our presentation today about renaissance era what did we learn today yeah about elizabeth era jacobian era and puritan and also the characteristic of renaissance era there is leonardo da vinci da vinci galileo galilei and then niccolo machiavelli and lots other okay hope this will be benefit for all of you but i'm sure it will beneficial and then if you have any question you may ask to us in we are group or you may directly ask to our lecturer mom rahmi yeah that's all from us that's all from third member thank you very much for your very nice attention the last i say the last we say wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh